Hello, I'm Dennis Danzik, and welcome to episode seven. Um, this is device has been made uh, named various things over the years. Uh, we pretty much call it the Stanford device. It's because a couple of guys that went to Stanford came in. They were really curious about how the system worked, so they suggested that we build a specific device that had removable sections. We can change the moment of inertia in just by some simple barbell weights. I'm not going to take this apart at this point. Uh, we built this uh, back in. 2018, 2019, uh, and it shows acceleration. This is a simple RPM uh, gauge that's hooked up right here to this follower. This large device here uh, was purchased uh, to measure torque out of the system. Uh, about $90,000 worth of uh, instrumentation up there. Um, you can see the little uh, Bluetooth feeder right there in the circuit. Um, they typically use these on large ships to tell the uh, torque of the output shaft. Um, you can see the uh, attenuator moving here. It's over here. I'm not going to do a back shot on this particular thing. It's a little bit too crowded in here. And this green one, which you can't see, is a point of the the, uh, the point of entropy. Um, you'll be able to see it as I uh, as I rotate it around. Again, a very weak field. Uh, I don't have a I don't have a razor blade over here. So this is a charged drum. It's very 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 weak all the way around, and the attenuator on here matches what you saw in Marie 4. Uh, if you come on a tour, you'll see it's a very, very weak magnetic field. Um, this uh, particular flywheel here weighs 1,200 pounds and is 48 inches in diameter. So I'm going to go ahead and manipulate it, and you can see how it reacts. Hopefully that RPM gauge is very, very visible. So all i got to do, I'm going to take this down into the attenuation position, and I'm going to hold it, not going to do any work. There is absolutely no energy going into this system, uh, just use of magnetic force. The paired permanent magnetic field is here between the attenuator and the flywheel itself. We're going to let it come around. And as you can see, we're under constant acceleration, now about 2.5 RPM. Here comes the uh, point of entropy. When it hits there, I'm going to raise it. It's going to click through, and I'm going to go right back down. Now we're at 3.2, 3.3, 3.5, 3.7, 3.8. There's four RPM. Coming up on our second round, we're going to hit a good number. There's the point of entropy. I come up, 4.5. Let it get up to about 7 or 8, and then I'll show you how this works. Point of entropy again. Looks like we hit 5.3. RPM. Again, this is 1200 RPM, so you've got a significant amount of energy building um, in this device that obviously, instead of that break, that test break up there, we could put a, an alternator, a generator on the system and uh, produce energy for quite some time. There's a lot of stored energy in, uh, in a 1200 pound, 48 inch flywheel. There it goes around. I'm going to let this go by itself so that you can see that it's going down. Now, if I don't control that, we're going to lose speed. There's the point of entropy. I'll let it do it one more time. We're still at 7.5. We were at 8.1. There it goes. 7 RPM. So if I go back down, this is going to go right back into acceleration. And I don't put any energy into the system. I bring it up. There's nothing there. I take it back down. And there we go. We're under constant acceleration. There's 7.2, 7.3. Again, bring it up. Bring it back down. And remember, I'm doing the work on the downward side. That's what the computer would do. But it, does, it goes up by itself. And that's exactly how it behaves on Marie 4 as well. It goes up by itself, goes back down. I have to push it down, but there's very, very little force on this. Just to give you an idea, up it goes. I'll just take my, little, my one finger and just push it down. It is very, very, very little amount of force. And there we are at 9 RPM. So in that amount of time, uh, we spun 1,200 pounds up to 9 RPM. You can see that attenuator action, how that behaves. So it's going to go, we, here we want to control it, we want to go down. But on the entropy side, we let it come back up, reset, and then we push it back down. That's about 50% of the, uh, of the force necessary, and it'll just, uh, if it, it'll just keep going. If I want to hold it in the neutral position, it will um, continue to decline. If I let it go, it'll decline slower. So that's it for episode seven. Uh, this is what we call a Stanford device. Um, it's here for you to operate. You come on a tour. Again, we don't edit these videos. Um, you can come in and 
uh, understand how the device works except for its geometry and its geography. Everything else is uh, wide open. You can bring meters and everything else to test things. And heck, if you want, you're here long enough, we'll even hook up the torque device so you can get some accurate torque measurements off of that uh, 80 millimeter shaft. By the way, this 80 millimeter shaft is what we designated for all of our engines. So they all uh, get shipped with that universal 80 millimeter shaft. Hope you enjoyed this episode. We'll see you in the next episode. Thank you.